Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing the pathology of asthma. Okay, so we're in the um, process of looking at mast cell activation in asthma. So we've discussed that um, you, in the pathology of asthma, you start off with your primary exposure to the allergen. That causes the adaptive immune response to be initiated for reasons that we don't understand what actually differs between people who are not uh, allergic to the uh, allergen and people who are allergic to the allergen. We don't actually know why people who are allergic uh, initiate the adaptive immune response, whereas people who aren't allergic don't. Okay, uh, although we looked at several stages where it could have been uh, that the answer was there, basically. Okay, then what happens is that that results in the production of this immunoglobulin E that is against um, the allergen. Okay, and the IgE ends up being mounted on the FC epsilon R1 receptors on the surface of the mast cells in the lamina propria of the bronchi. Okay, then when you get secondary exposure to the allergen, it will cause cross-linking of the um, IgE molecules that are mounted on the surface of the mast cell, which will cross-link the FC epsilon R1s, which triggers the activation of the mast cell. And in activated mast cells, calcium goes up, which causes the exocytosis of the histamine granules, and it also activates the cellular phospholipase A2, which results in the production of arachidonic acid. And secondly, for actually thirdly now, the calcium also activates this 5-lipoxygenase, or 5-LO, enzyme, which is now going to work on this arachidonic acid. So, what does 5-LO convert arachidonic acid into? Well, actually, it catalyzes two reactions. Firstly, it's going to convert the arachidonic acid into a molecule that is known as 5-HPETE. Okay, 5-HPT. Okay, now what does this stand for? Well, this stands for 5-hydroperoxy-icosatetraenoic acid. Okay, so let's write this down. So 5-hydroperoxy, that's the 5-H, and then P is for peroxy. And then the E-T-E, this stands for icosa tetraenoic acid. So icosa is the E here. And then the TE is for tetraenoic acid. Tetraenoic acid. Okay, so 5-hydroperoxy icosa tetraenoic acid. So 5-LO, 5-lipoxygenase, first converts arachidonic acid into 5-HPETE, and then it converts it onwards into what's known as uh, leukotriene A4. Okay, so it's going to go to leukotriene A4. Now, leukotriene A4 can then be acted upon uh, by two different enzymes, which are going to send it different ways, basically. So again, it's 5-lipoxygenase, which catalyzes this conversion of 5-HPT into leukotriene A4. So it overall converts arachidonic acid into leukotriene A4. Now, leukotriene A4 can go down two separate routes, okay? So, firstly, it's going to come out of the membrane and it's now going to go into the cytoplasm of the cell. So arachidonic acid and 5-HPETE were both in the membrane and so was 5-lipoxygenase, or at least 5-lipoxygenase was at the membrane. But once it's converted it into leukotriene A4, that goes into the cytoplasm. And in the cytoplasm, there are two enzymes which can convert this further. Okay, so one pathway is for leukotriene A4 to be converted into what's known as leukotriene B4. Okay, and by the way, leukotrienes are often abbreviated to LT, okay, and then you put the name afterwards or the determinant, the uh, qualifier. Okay, so leukotriene B4 and leukotriene A4 would be LTA4. Okay, so the enzyme which converts leukotriene A4 into leukotriene B4 is an enzyme known as a leukotriene A4 hydrolase. Okay, so I have to write this down here where I wanted to put the other products, but never mind. So, leukotriene A4 hydrolase. Okay, so um, one option 
is then that leukotriene A4 will be converted into leukotriene B4 by this cytoplasmic enzyme here, and then the leukotriene B4 uh, will be secreted from the mast cell into the interstitial fluid, and we'll see what that is going to do later. Okay, the other pathway first converts leukotriene A4 into leukotriene C4, and then leukotriene C4 goes on to become leukotriene D4, and then finally leukotriene E4. Okay, now the enzyme which catalyzes the conversion of leukotriene A4 into leukotriene C4 is an enzyme known as glutathione S transferase, which is often abbreviated to GST for short, so glutathione S transferase. Okay, right. Now, these three leukotrienes here, leukotriene C4, D4, and E4, even though they are in this pathway like this, you, you might think, therefore, that leukotriene E4 is the final product, and that will then be secreted from the cell. Well, actually, all four of them are secreted from the cell, so you don't just secrete the final product in this pathway, you secrete all of the intermediates as well. Okay, so they're all secreted from the cell, and they pretty much do the same thing. So they are collectively known as the cystinyl leukotrienes. Okay, so there is leukotriene B4 and also the cystinyl leukotrienes. So when people talk about the cystinyl leukotrienes, they mean leukotriene C4, leukotriene D4, and leukotriene E4. And whenever you produce one, you produce the others as well. So they're never found in isolation, basically. They're always found together. So it makes sense to think of the uh, leukotrienes, um, the cystinyl leukotrienes together. Okay, and collectively, they're abbreviated to cis, like that for cystinyl, and then LT for leukotrienes. Okay, right. So, the mast cell, then, overall, is producing histamine, it's producing leukotriene B4, and then it's producing these cysteine leukotrienes. Now, uh, it's also going to secrete one more very important thing that we want to talk about, which is tumor necrosis factor alpha is also going to be produced. Okay, so we're now in a position to talk about how these things are going to cause a asthmatic attack. Okay, so you've had your secondary exposure, the mast cells are releasing all of these alarm signals, basically. And these alarm signals are going to be what causes an asthmatic attack, okay, or status asthmaticus. So, let's see how they do this. So, here is our fresh piece of paper. Right, so, let's write all of these alarm signals that we've now produced up here. So, we've got histamine, okay? We have got leukotriene B4, LTB4. We have got the cystinyl leukotriene, cis-LT. And we finally have tumor necrosis factor alpha. Now, basically, an asthmatic attack can be divided into two portions. It can be divided into the immediate phase, which occurs within minutes of you inhaling the allergen. Okay, so the immediate phase, okay, of the asthmatic attack, and then it can be divided into the late phase, okay, um, which occurs within hours of uh, the allergen uh, being inhaled. Okay, so we'll discuss the immediate phase first. Now, in the immediate phase, histamine, leukotriene B4, and cis-leukotriene are going to be important. So these three here are going to trigger the immediate phase, whereas um, tumor necrosis factor alpha is going to trigger the late phase. So, let's see what happens in the immediate phase then. So, the first thing to talk about is the contraction of uh, the uh, smooth muscle cells that line the bronchus. Okay, so long ago now we drew this picture of the bronchus here, or in fact of all the bronchi. This won't just be happening in a bronchus, this will be happening in the entire bronchial tree. Okay, now what's going to happen is in an asthmatic attack you're going to get contraction of this uh, smooth muscle cell layer 
here that's underneath the lamina propria. Okay, so what triggers this? Well, two things, basically. Histamine and the cystinile leukotrienes have receptors on the surface of the smooth muscle cells. Okay, so if we have our smooth muscle cell here, then basically, on the surface of the, um, of the uh, smooth muscle cell, so let's have this as a smooth muscle cell, an SMC for short, you have histamine receptors, which is here, okay, which is a 7 transmembrane receptor. Now, the type of histamine receptor that you have on the surface of these smooth muscle cells is the H1 receptor, okay? So, uh, there are different histamine receptors, which are all G-protein coupled receptors. Now, the H1 receptor is the one which is on the surface of these smooth muscle cells. So, histamine that has been released by the mast cells in the lamina propria will diffuse back to the smooth muscle cell layer and will act on the H1 receptor on these smooth muscle cells and that will trigger the contraction of this smooth muscle cell here. Okay? In addition, the cystinile leukotrienes also have receptors on the surface of the smooth muscle cells, and they will also trigger contraction of the smooth muscle cells. Okay, and we'll continue this discussion in the next video.